this lecture, we are going to be looking at cost volume profit analysis, or more commonly referred to as CVP analysis. And with CVP, we examine the relationship between changes in output, changes in total sales, costs, and net profit. So in other words, guys, please remember output is just your volume or your units. So if my sales volume changes or if my selling price per unit changes or any of my costs change, what impact will that have on my net profit? Or if I want to achieve a certain net profit, what must my sales volume be? Or what must my selling price per unit be? We are examining the relationship between all of these different variables. And it's very important to understand that CVP analysis can only be used for decisions that result in outcomes within the relevant range. So what is the relevant range? It is the output range at which the firm expects to be operating within a short-term planning horizon. Or in other words, it is the normal operating range of the organization. So let's say, for example, we have a company that normally makes anything between 400 and 500 units per month. Then that is their normal operating range, or that is their relevant range. And when we are performing all of these CVP calculations, we can only perform these calculations within the relevant range. We can't work outside of the relevant range. And the reason for that is because outside of the relevant range, things start to change. My selling price and my variable costs are no longer constant per unit, and my fixed costs are no longer constant in total. So what is the reason for this? Why do things change when I move outside of my relevant range? So let's stick with the original example I gave you. Let's say that the relevant range for this company is anything between 400 and 500 units. If the company now wants to move outside of the relevant range, so let's say they now want to manufacture and sell 700 units. They are now outside of their relevant range. It might only be possible to sell those additional units if we drop our selling price. So beyond the relevant range, increases in sales volumes may only be possible if we reduce selling prices. In addition to that, your variable cost per unit is also going to change outside of the relevant range because you are now probably going to qualify for bulk discounts on your purchases. So that cost is going to also change or not be constant outside of the relevant range. So my variable cost per unit should decrease if we move beyond the relevant range because the firm should obtain the benefit of bulk discounts. On the other hand, your fixed cost in total should increase if we move outside of the relevant range because if we need to increase capacity, that could result in new machines having to be purchased. It could result in rental of additional factory space. And all of these things obviously increase our fixed costs. So all of these things are only constant within the relevant range. Outside of the relevant range, everything starts to change. So that means that any results which are obtained from formula that fall outside of the relevant range will be incorrect. So is this then a limitation of CVP analysis? No, definitely not. Because our intention is not to perform calculations throughout all ranges of output. So we are not trying to perform all of these calculations throughout all ranges of output for any production volume. Our objective is to perform these calculations over the range of output at which the firm expects to be operating within a short-term planning horizon. Or in other words, we will only perform these calculations within the relevant range or within the normal operating range of the organization. 
And that is the range that the firm expects to be operating in. They don't expect to operate outside of their relevant range. So this is definitely not a limitation of CVP analysis, but just something that we need to be aware of when performing our calculations. We then need to look at the assumptions of cost, volume, profit analysis. Now with these assumptions, all we are doing is trying to simplify the real world so that it's possible to perform the calculations. If we don't make these assumptions, we can't perform the calculations. And the first assumption that we make is all variables other than the one under consideration remain constant. So let's say, for example, we need to calculate what our selling price per unit must be if we want to achieve a certain profit. So we are trying to calculate the selling price per unit. That is the variable which is under consideration. All other variables will remain constant. So my fixed cost in total will remain constant. My variable cost per unit will remain constant. My sales volume will remain constant. So when we are performing these calculations, everything remains constant apart from the variable that we are actually considering or the variable that we are actually trying to calculate. Then the next assumption is either a single product is being sold or if a range of products are being sold, this is in accordance with a predetermined sales mix. So you'll see when we get to our calculations, either we will be dealing with a company that sells a single product or a company that sells more than one product, meaning a range of products. Now these calculations are very simple if we have a company that only sells a single product, so it's very unlikely that this will be examined at a CTA level. It's more common at a CTA level that you will be dealing with a company that sells more than one product, or in other words, a range of products. And if the company sells a range of products, the assumption that we make is this will always be in accordance with a predetermined sales mix. So what does that mean? Let's say, for example, we have a company that sells product A and product B. And for every one unit of product A they sell, they sell three units of product B. That is their sales mix. And the assumption that we make is that sales mix will remain constant. So for example, if the company now sells three units of product A, that means they will sell nine units of product B because for every one unit of A, they sell three units of B, and that sales mix remains constant. We also assume that the selling price and our variable cost per unit do not change within the relevant range. So we have a constant selling price per unit and a constant variable cost per unit within our relevant range. The next assumption is that profits are calculated on the variable costing basis, and if absorption costing is used, it's necessary to assume that production is equal to sales. All right, so this assumption requires further explanation. What am I talking about over here? When we perform any CVP calculations, we assume that we are using variable costing. In other words, Remember, with variable costing, my fixed costs are not included in the value of inventory. My fixed costs are treated as period costs and expensed in the period incurred. So the same applies with CVP analysis. And this is an extremely important assumption, so I want you to add this right at the top of your notes. The principles of variable costing are applied meaning that fixed costs are expensed in the period incurred.
So this is consistent with variable costing. If absorption costing is used, it's necessary to assume that production is equal to sales. So guys, please remember if production is equal to sales, so in other words, we produce 100 units and we sell 100 units, that means the company will not have any opening or closing inventory. Now remember, with absorption costing, our fixed costs are not expensed in the period incurred, any fixed costs that are manufacturing in nature are included in the value of inventory. However, what we are saying over here is we need to assume that production is equal to sales, or in other words, there's no opening or closing inventory. So if there's no opening or closing inventory, then your fixed costs will be expensed in the period incurred. So all this point is telling us is regardless of whether we are using variable costing or absorption costing, we need to assume that the fixed costs are expensed in the period incurred. Then the next assumption is semi-variable costs can be accurately split into their fixed and variable elements. So we already know that. We can't work with semi-variable costs. If we have a semi-variable cost, we need to take that cost and split it into its fixed and variable portions before we can perform any calculations. The next assumption is this analysis is only appropriate for decisions that are taken within the relevant production range. So we've already discussed that in detail above. We know that all of these calculations will only be performed within the relevant range. If we move outside of our relevant range, things start to change, and these calculations will then not be accurate. Then the last assumption that we make is this analysis only applies to the short-term horizon. So in other words, over a period of one year. And the reason for that, guys, is if we are going to assume that your selling price per unit and your variable cost per unit remain constant, and also your fixed costs in total remain constant, we have to be looking at this over a short-term planning horizon. Because in the long term, everything is going to change. In the long term, your fixed cost in total will change. Your variable cost per unit will change. Your selling price per unit will change. So in the long term, everything changes. So in order to make it possible to do these calculations, please note we are only looking at a short-term planning horizon, or in other words, a period of one year. And over that one year, we can assume that everything within the relevant range does remain constant. In addition to that, you will see when we are performing all of these calculations, time value of money is ignored. So because these are short-term calculations, we don't have to worry about the impact of time value of money. If they give you a cost or a revenue amount, you use that amount as it is, and we don't have to worry about time value of money or inflation or anything like that.